we're going to move to the last two resolutions. Um, we'll call on Jim McIntyre and Lydia Munoz for resolution 13. It, okay. Yeah, I'd say you got to keep rolling. I can't stop people from doing what they're doing. But wait a minute, Mike. Well, but first. Anybody give me begin. $25, I'll take your um, machine back over there for you. So. All right, you're in order. Jim McIntyre, pastoring at Royers Ford uh, United Methodist Church. Reverend Lydia Munoz, my wife, was to be here presenting with me, and we share in this resolution, but she is presiding today at the funeral of a 31-year-old member of her congregation who, uh, who uh, fought a fight against cancer, um, but has now moved on to a new home. So keep uh, Church of the Open Door and Lydia in prayer, if you would. Bishop, I move the adoption of Resolution 2019-13. It is in order. Would you like to speak to it? I would. Thank you. You're on. We are broken. We are in disagreement. We are hurting. We are afraid. We are apologetic to the communities in which we minister. We need healing. You have heard it was said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth, but Jesus says to us, do not resist an evildoer. But if anyone strikes you on the right cheek, turn the other also. And if anyone wants to sue you and take your coat, give your cloak as well. And if anyone forces you to go one mile, go also the second mile. This is Jesus' call to resist the oppressive powers around us and to reject the regressive attacks that threaten us. You have now heard it said, we must search out each other's life choices to decide to our satisfaction whether or not others are living in a same-sex relationship. You have heard it said that district committees and boards of ordained ministry must recognize some gifts for ministry but reject and exclude a person's sexuality as a gift. You have heard it said that our clergy who are found to have performed a legal wedding with which we may disagree will lose their means of financial support for at least one year, putting at risk their children and families and homes, their congregations and their sacred lives. You have heard it said that the United Methodist Church is a safe space, a place of welcome, except when we disagree with your life expression or your understanding of God's love. Welcome to all, unless you want to be married or ordained. But we say, the spirit of this annual conference is that we will hold each other accountable in love only and not as punishment. That we will embrace each other in unity and not in the temptation of condemnation that we will commit to praying for each other rather than prying into each other's lives, that we will not act precipitously or in vengeance, that we will not be quick to judge but act only in full prayerful discernment, that we refuse to live a corporate life of fear, but rather an abundant life of unity and seconds. compassion and faith. 30 seconds. You have heard that it was said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy, but we hear Jesus' response. I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. So we proclaim that the spirit of this annual conference is one of unity and not division, prayer and not persecution, love and not hate. Let's wrap up now. You have heard it said, do no harm, do good, and stay in love with God. So we, as an annual conference, say, do no harm, do good, and stay in love with God. Thank you. Microphone number one, what is your pleasure? Uh, Timothy Fisher, Penargel Grace. I rise to submit a substitute motion, which I believe you have uh, received beforehand. Okay, could we have that slide, please?
Substitute motion slide. Anybody back there? Going once, going twice. Okay, they're working on it. Okay, please read it. Or please read it out loud, because some people might be able, not be able to see the tiny words. Sure, I'm reading off tiny words to this uh, new <coughs> phone. Uh, so the substitute motion in large parts retains the same language okay. as the uh, Munoz McIntyre resolution. However, okay. in certain instances, uh, it reads. Whereas the 2019 General Conference Special Session spoke to the issue of human sexual behavior standards as we defined them in the United Methodist Book of Discipline regarding adoption of a plan to unity, to unify the United Methodist Church, and whereas the Eastern Pennsylvania Conference, in accordance with our United Methodist social principles, is firm in acknowledging that, quote, Sexual sexuality is God's good gift to all persons, end quote, and that, quote, all persons, regardless of age, gender, marital status, or sexual orientation, are entitled to have their human and civil rights ensured and to be protected against violence, end quote, and that we, quote, implore families and churches not to reject or condemn lesbian and gay members and friends, end quote. And whereas congregations, individuals, laity, and clergy of the Eastern Pennsylvania Conference are in full and faithful ministry in diverse ways with people of varying expressions of sexual orientation and gender identity, including LGBTQIA+, I believe that's what it says here, uh, and tiny print uh, persons. And whereas Jesus' primary call to all was, and this is a direct quote from Mark chapter 1, 15, repent and believe in the gospel. And whereas we as United Methodist followers of Jesus are committed to not excluding anyone from access to God's grace, and to fully providing the most faithful ministries to, for, and with all of God's children. And whereas our baptismal covenant calls us to accept the freedom and power God gives us to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves, end quote, Therefore, be it resolved that the Eastern Pennsylvania Conference affirms the traditional plan and remains committed to continued support of ministry to, for, and with all persons regardless of sexual orientation or gender identity. Hey, if I have a second, uh, I would that just speak to that. I need a second? We have a second. You may speak to her. You have up to three minutes. It's been long the history of our denomination to have standards of behavior. Uh, you can read our disciplines going back to the earliest stage of, of Methodism and find that we did, in fact, give advice and counsel as to how to live in accordance with as it was the understanding of scriptural counsel. We are in such a state today where we are advising scriptural faithfulness and a social, ethical behavior.
the general conference that was a special call conference of 2019 considered this matter and in consequence affirmed the traditional plan. I believe that it would be to our benefit at least until 2020 General Conference concludes to simply stick with the advice and counsel of the 2019 special call General Conference to affirm the traditional plan. Thank you, Bishop. Thank you. Now, May I? The substitute is probably before us. And May we, I? That's a speech in favor. Uh, you get the last word, but you, yeah, we've got to have this debated. So I need a speech against the substitute, and then we'll debate that, and then you decide if you want to affirm that one or vote against it. So is there someone who'd like to speak against it? Microphone four. What's your business? That's you. Uh-huh. Timmy? Yeah, you're on. Yeah, Joe DiPaolo, First Church. I actually had a question on a point of order on the original resolution. Is this mm -hmm. the time, or do I need to wait till this is dealt with? We've got to wait on that until okay. we get the, done the substitute. But hold right. that thought. So it's always in order to ask a point of order. Okay, uh, someone who could speak against it. Is that you, Nike? microphone number? Number two, number, two was number two was here first. Okay, I'm sorry. Number two, who are you? Bishop Johnson, Ann Jacob, Lima, UMC, laity. I rise to speak against the substitute and in favor of the main motion. Is that in order? Just the substitute. Just the substitute. I rise to speak against it. Okay. The vote at the 2019 United Methodist General Conference Special Session held in St. Louis caused great harm and spiritual violence to the LGBTQIA plus community. We, the laity and clergy of the Eastern Pennsylvania Conference, grieve this hurt and with other United Methodists across this connection, lament this harm done. We reject the outcome of that special session vote and pledge to continue to affirm the lives, ministries, and families of our LGBTQIA plus siblings. Friends, I invite you to stand with me as you are able as I read this statement. We pledge to continue to resist against all forms of evil, oppression, and systemic dis discrimination in whatever forms they present themselves, as declared in our baptismal covenant, and to continue to educate, raise awareness of intersectional oppression as they manifest themselves among the communities we serve, and to continue to love and serve all people in the name of Jesus the Christ. We, the clergy and laity of the Eastern Pennsylvania Conference, believe love is love. All persons are of sacred worth. Black lives matter. Climate change is real. Water is life and connected to all living things. No human being is illegal. One minute. All gender identities are whole, holy, and in the image of God. Women's rights are human rights. All abilities are expressions of the divine. Colonialism is white supremacy in action. Racism in all its forms is incompatible with the teachings of Jesus. To devalue one person is to devalue all people. We affirm the truth as written by Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. that injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. We, seconds. the clergy and laity of the Eastern Pennsylvania Conference, agree with John Wesley that though we do not think alike, may we all strive to love, striving to do no harm and to do good, all the good we can. We are working towards God's justice we will only get there if we work together. This main section of the statement was provided by the New York Annual Conference, and we have this adopted time. it, 165 of us, and we would urge you to vote against this substitute motion. 
Thank you. That was a speech against. Could it, and please, folks, let's not have any applause at this time. A speech in favor of the substitute. Anyone speaking, wishing to speak in favor? I don't see anybody, so I gotta wave your hand if you wanna speak in favor. Okay, I see a human back there wanting. Okay, uh, is that microphone three? It is, uh, my thing is a point of order, though. I don't believe we're supposed to be debating the merits of either motion right now, but whether to accept the substitute motion or to preserve the main motion for our debate. We're considering the substitute first, doing that by debating it. I mean, it's just how you decide on something, right? You gotta hear people's opinions. But we're, so, uh, so we're in order to argue the merits of the substitute at this point? Well, she was ordering, explaining why so. she was against it. So that was not the merits, that was the, her opinion against it. So we're considering the substitute by having speeches uh, for and against. So that was a speech against, and a speech in favor is now well, in order. Okay, then I um, can alter my question to be a speech in favor of Tim's Okay, then, you, then you're in order if you want to speak in favor of the substitute. Go right ahead. Yeah. I wish to speak in favor of the substitute because I am disturbed by the language of the original. Estimated that 65% of the delegates from the United States, that sounds very nationalist to me. We've just had, you know, eight years of a call to action to avoid all these isms, and we're injecting one back in nationalism. So I would be in favor of preserving Tim's instead of going with a new one. Okay, thank you. That's a speech in favor. So we need a speech against. Number five, are you speaking against? Yes, Here. Howard Labrining, Rolling Hills United Methodist lay member. Okay. This substitute amendment is just plain words. Games. It it's, talks about the traditional plan when what we're presented with is the one plan. So it, this is not, it's not a substitute. It's an alternate resolution. Okay. Now we need someone to speak in favor. Anyone want to speak in favor of the substitute? I see Joan back there. Number five. No, that's number three. That's three. three that's three. Number we got to get bigger numbers on these balloons. Number three, You're in Joan Trout from Beams Church in Wallace Street. I speak in favor of the substitute for at least two reasons. The first one being I am very troubled by the idea of voting on a resolution that is against the current book of discipline, especially after the traditional plan was voted as the plan to go with at the yeah. 2019 special conference. Mm -hmm. Therefore, it does not seem right to me at all to be voting against the plan that is currently our discipline. My second reason is because as many things were said by the folks who stood here, those of us who fear differently desire to hate no one, desire to exclude no one. Please. We have different ideas about what is right, what is God's will, and how we should respond to that. <coughs> and people of goodwill are on both sides of this question, and I am very troubled by anyone who says that's not true. Thank you. Okay, number four, are you against or in favor? Against. You're in order. Scott Johnson, equalizing lay member from Royersford United Methodist Church. The words that we say may not be what others hear. Let me tell you about one young man. Before I knew him, he told me, very matter of fact, I'm going to hell and I'm okay with that. His church had condemned him for being gay and he didn't know that some Christians love him and accept him as he is. And even with those deep scars, he has brought Christ into the lives of many people in his community. Two days ago, sitting right up there, I got a text from a friend. 
I helped her legally change her name. And on Thursday, the Pennsylvania Department of Vital Records told her they were going to reissue her birth certificate to correct her gender identity. I've invited her to our church often, but she has refused. Even though she grew up in the church, she will not worship there. She will not worship where she may be hurt. Church is not a safe place. About a month ago, I cautioned my church council that some people were going to feel unwelcome in our church when we told all of our members that we plan to follow the traditional plan. on human sexuality. What I didn't expect was that the first person to leave the congregation would be my wife. One minute. We met in that church I told you about a few minutes ago. We've been together, married now for 42 years, but she is no longer comfortable worshiping amongst a congregation where others feel unwelcome. You see, our words, I love you, and all are welcome, may not be what others hear. And let me just close by saying that my greatest, my greatest regret in life is not those I know I have hurt, but rather those I hurt and never know. Okay. Speech in favor is an order, and the, this is the order in which people showed up at the mic. Uh, microphone five, are you speaking in favor? Against. Okay, microphone two, are you speaking in favor? Microphone two? I'm neutered. Four or against? Uh, it would be against. Okay, microphone number one, are you speaking in favor or against? In favor. Okay, you are in order. Microphone number one. Uh, Julian Molesky, Caltmont North District. I watched a group of people gather in front of a microphone to show support of their person, and I felt bullied. I didn't see where the equity that everyone claims they want to see was shown. I understand that in, in my family I have the same thing, and I love them. There is nothing wrong with that. They are children of God. A little bit earlier, we talked about this book. We can change the book of discipline. Are you going to rewrite the Bible while you're at it? Come on, people. Come on. Microphone number five, are you speaking in favor? Against. No? Against, against. Yeah, you are in order, number five. No pause, Thank you, Bishop. Uh, Tim from Thompson Hall from Ardmore. I speak against this substitute resolution. We all understand that the discipline got changed or reaffirmed in the special session of General Conference in St. Louis. So we can't change that per se. But what we can do is stand up and say no in spirit. And we can begin with creating a rainbow wave that will defy what I feel was a very bad decision, and many others do as well. So until we actually change the discipline next year, and I feel the spirit moving that direction, we can at least stand up and say no to what was decided, in spirit and affirm the love of Christ for all. The substitute motion does not take us down that path from my perspective. So I implore us to defeat this substitute. Thank you. Microphone, num that was a speech against. So a speech in favor is in order. Number three, are you in favor? In favor. You're in order. Don Bergen, Equalizing Lay, member from the North District. Uh, we just spent, um, well, we spent 
decades, but we've spent a number of years going through a very intentional process of trying to discern a way forward. We've spent countless millions of dollars, uh, countless hours in prayer and fasting trying to discern uh, God's will and uh, our way forward. Uh, if we are going to reject that, that's a sad commentary on our processes, on our structure, and uh, we might as well all just go home because if we can't um, come to a decision and live by it after all that, what is any decision we make? What, what, why are we here? Thank you. Thank you. That was, that's a speech, a favor. And number two, you were going to speak against. Is that correct? You were in order. Blessings upon this holy ground and sacred ground. Barbara Revere, equalizing member, East District, First United Methodist Church of Germantown. Jesus loves me, for the Bible tells me so. I call for the question. That's in order. We've had four and five, so we have more than exceeded our number of speeches necessary. But uh, we need a second. Uh, this is non-debatable, so we're going to go straight May to a vote. It needs two-thirds to end debate, and then we'll May go I? straight to a vote. Uh, no. May you, I? No, we'd have to, no, we have to go straight to the decision no. about the you decision. You said I had the last word no. on. He doesn't get the last word? No. He gets the last word when we're in you. This is the substitute. Okay, this is All just the substitute. Okay. I so. object. I believe it's not germane. The substitute is not germane to the motion okay. that's before us. All right, well, there you go. The body, if you would like to go straight to the vote on this substitute, lift the hand and say aye. aye. If not, same sign. And substitute, substitute is defeated. Now and now we're back to the main motion. No, no. Sorry. It's been a long day. Okay, now we got a vote on the substitute. Take a deep breath. Let's have a word of prayer. Gracious God, we're here to vote on the substitute. And we know it's not an easy thing. And there's hearts of many stripes here and many good, 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 good people. So, Lord, may this vote be in accordance with your will and you just help us to discern just help us to discern give us a minute to discern we pray this in your precious name amen amen okay now you just voted to call the question so we're not debating now we're going to vote on the substitute. Do you have a point of order? Yes. What's your point of order? My okay, point, of, point order, of order that uh, according to the rules, a substitute or amendment must be germane to the motion that's before us. This substitute resolution is not germane to the subject that's in front of us. It addresses our, an affirmation of the traditional plan. The resolution before us asks us to adopt in spirit the spirit of the one church plan. It's um, a, a, an opposite um, position uh, with this substitute resolution, therefore not germane, okay. and should be ruled out of order. All right, well, we're going to vote. If you will vote in favor of the substitute, lift the hand and say aye. aye. If you oppose the substitute, lift the hand and say aye. aye. We're going to have to go to a tally, a vote from our tellers. Standing vote, right? What's he calling for? No, he no, can't do no. that. He can't do no. Come no, on up. No. We gotta need your help to help count. Come on up. Hand tight, hang tight. Okay, so so I'm gonna call and then you get your folks you know, get your your folks to ready ready count, right? Get the towers around the room. It just I can't see <laughs> fairly without a head count, that's all. Okay, Reverend Kofi, do you have your tellers in place? Okay, if you will support the substitute, please stand, stand.
As the tellers count you, they will tell you to sit down. Once they've counted you and told you to sit down, please be seated. All right, we have our, those people who were in favor of the uh, substitute. That count has been sent in. Now I would like to see standing those people who are opposed to the substitute.
Abstentions. Please stand if you're abstaining. Abstentions. Okay. Um, will you read them? The secretary will read the results of the standing vote regarding the substitute motion. 170 in favor, 309 against, 21 abstentions. So a substitute does fail, but this time I've got a microphone number four, a point of order. Yeah, Joe, uh, Joe DiPaolo, First Church Lancaster. It's a question about uh, the point of order is, since the One Church plan, which had been considered and rejected by the St. Louis conference, uh, conference uh, included as part of it the changing of our language on the conducting of same-sex marriage, ordination of practicing homosexuals, and so forth, uh, would not this resolution then put us out of compliance with the discipline, and therefore should it not be ruled out of order? It's really my assessment that this is one of the many, many, many things we've done in this body in the past and in other conferences around the country and has been ruled in many times with the Judicial Council that aspirational kinds of things are in order, but we still have to maintain the discipline. So hear me, folks. We have to maintain the discipline no matter what is voted here. But if is this voted, then it's aspirational only, in my opinion. Then uh, could I make a motion? Sure. Well, I'd I like to move that we postpone indefinitely the consideration of this resolution. And if there's a second, I'd really like to say why. Okay. It seems like you've got the second. Bishop, I was in St. Louis as you were, as a number of us were. Many of us watched the proceedings online, and we've all been dealing with the after effects. No one came away from that experience not feeling battered and abused. And I do not see the point of us relitigating, refighting, and replaying St. Louis here in Oaks, Pennsylvania today. All it will accomplish is simply to have more of us be farther apart than we were before, divide us farther, and have many more people leave feeling battered and abused. And in the end, we'll take a vote. 50% plus a few, perhaps, will win or lose. We'll pretend that it's the will of the body when we know it isn't, and we'll go away feeling once more even more divided than before. And to what end? We cannot override the decisions of General Conference. Minneapolis is less than a year away when this will be dealt with once more, and I do not see anything healthy or good coming out of continuing this debate and hurting each other even more. Okay, it is a speech against uh, folks. Let's be in order. The motion is to table, so we need to debate this. So are you against this motion to table, number three? Postpone indefinitely. In, in po postpone well, I, indefinitely. I, number I, I three? Wanna, what I want to do is find out what was the, how many people voted when we just voted? 
What was Hold the, the tally? Is this can, you the number? can you tell me again? All right, we'll read the vote one more time. 170 in favor, 309 against, 21 abstentions. Okay. Does anyone in the body wish to speak against the tabling motion? Against tabling. Number four, what is your business? Hello, my name is Hannah Adair Bonner. I rise to speak against this motion okay. to table. You're in order? Um, postpone indefinitely. I rise to speak against postponing indefinitely. Thank you. Yes. A few minutes ago in one of the earlier speeches, somebody said that they have such things in their family too. And I want to remind us that we are not things, that I am not a stick to thing. the motion. Stick, stick to why you want to, you know. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. I, I am. Okay. I, 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 I am, actually. Okay. All right. I think that it is important for the people in this room who have been made to feel that way to receive the opportunity to be told by this conference that there is a place for them where they can be loved and to postpone this indefinitely is to deny the people gathered in this room to send that message to our young people, to our LGBTQ plus people, to those that are struggling with the things that they've heard and they've experienced this, ye this year. And so I'm asking for us to be able to have this conversation so that all of you can have the opportunity to let us know that there is a place here. I don't want us to deny this body One minute. the opportunity to affirm that I, as a queer clergy person, am a part of this body and that this body does not want to see this limb cut off. I would like us to have the opportunity to send the message to our LGBTQ community that we agree with God. And I want to say I agree with God that you are fearfully and you are wonderfully made and you are worthy of being embraced in God's house and that God has said, if you will not be embraced in this house, God said, I will build a house of prayer for all people. Let's wrap up now. There is a place for you. Thank you. That's us now please hold the applause, friends. And microphone number two, what is your business? Speaking in favor or opposed to the postponement? I'm in John Longmire from Hempfield. I'm in favor of postponing this indefinitely. You're in order. You may Thank speak. you. Um, but first, before I say why, I just want to express um, to those with whom you know I may disagree, um, I do respect you and have a great love for many of you with whom I've interacted over the years. I came to this conference first when I was a little boy and knew many clergy and loved and continue to love the Methodist Church. Speak to the reason why you're... All right. Okay. Just telling you. I, I got understand. Um, Just time if we were short. to pass this um, through, then what it would mean, I would have to go back to my local church to tell them that they have a choice of what they need to make in terms of where their loyalty lies, whether to the United Methodist Church and the general conferences ruling, or the Eastern Pennsylvania conferences ruling. And so that's going to create division. 2020 is so close. There will be petitions for new ideas 
even amiable separation where we can bless each other, stop harming each other, and move on. And uh, th for that reason, I think it's really good for us to table this until the time we ha see what General Conference of 2020 will do. Thank you. Okay, that's a speech in favor against, and now we need one opposed. The microphone number one, were you opposed or are you in favor? You don't work, okay. Microphone number four, are you in favor or opposed? I'm in favor of, t of postponing it. Okay, you're not in order either. We need somebody against. Number two. Number two, are you speaking against this? Okay, you're in order. All right, Colleen Christula, retired elder, uh, located with FUNCOG and on Extension Ministry. Um, I oppose tabling this resolution when our political system passes something that we do not as a people believe something is right, we tell our Congress people, we send them letters, or we vote them out of office. We let them know that even though they represented us, we, the larger population, do not agree with what they said. And I believe that the resolution we're talking about postponing is our opportunity as a body to say, we sent people to general conference, but as a larger body, we don't agree with what was said and we want them to know that. Thank you. Microphone number one, you were in favor, correct? Okay, you're in order. Is Number on? one? Yeah. Yes, you're on now. Go ahead. Yeah, I believe this should be tabled. And what's your name? Uh, oh, Robert Erb from Valley Forge UMC. Thank you. Uh, lay person. <clears throat> I believe it should be tabled for several reasons. One of all this, one thing that the resolution as it was printed was uh, falsely asserts that the question of the adopted plan is before the Judicial Council. Uh, it's uh, that decision now been rendered. Second one that it's talked about concerns regarding the exchange of money and gifts for votes are being investigated. That is, the Africans were receiving bribes. That was checked out by the Ethics Committee, so that's a false assertion. The uh, effort to re re resurrect the defeated plan by saying our conference considers it a one-church conference is, is divisive by dividing us from the global UMC firm decision. It suggests that we are the enlightened, one, enlightened ones and we know better than the general conference. In other words, it's shamefully elitist. But even worse than that, this resolution is also um, was a subtle demonstration of racism. It conveys the message that we superior Americans would have easily passed the one church plan if weren't for those benighted Africans with quotation marks around that. They don't appreciate our culture and value. So I ask that you please uh, vote to table this unfortunate, divisive, elitist, and racist resolution. The speech, speech in favor of the tabling. Um, we need a speech against. Number four, are you against? No, I'm in favor of tabling. Okay, you gotta hold. Um, let's see, Micro what, microphone or two, right? Are you against? Microphone number two. What do you wish to do? I'm, wish to do? I'm, I'm against the light. Okay, you're in order. For such a time like this to live into our, oh, excuse me, Joanne Miles, newly, newly ordained deacon in full connection, um, St. Luke Bryn Mawr, for such a time like this to live into our baptismal covenant, to accept the freedom and power God gives us to resist evil, injustice in whatever form, the time is now, not next. Every day, every hour, every minute we delay, we cause harm. Okay, Micro that would be a speech against the postponement. Now in favor, uh, microphone number four, you were in order, so go right ahead. Yes, my, my name is Gene Erickson. I'm from St. John's Church in Paradise. Uh, I speak to postpone it only because I agree 
with the sentiments of Hannah and many others, but I don't think a resolution is going to solve anything. We're going to have to show how much we love one another by sitting down with each other. And whether we'll ever agree, at least we can continue to love. I don't think this resolution is going to do it. It's just going to divide us further. Okay, thank you. Um, that was a speech in favor. And now he's a speech against. Number five, are you in favor or against? Number five, way back there. You're against? Okay, you're in order. I don't know. Okay. Um, Lynn Yeager, lay delegate from Chestnut Hill United Church. <clears throat> Setting aside all the feelings that I personally have, I find it very odd that when a resolution was brought up and an alternate which was exactly the opposite of that resolution was brought up, the replacement resolution got a vote. And it was not supported by this body. And then the suggestion was that we should table the first one and not give that an opportunity for a vote. There were more of us who wanted to not substitute than there were who did. Let those of us, let this body know whether we want the first resolution to go forward. Thank you. Okay, we've had four speeches and four speeches, just saying. Um, microphone number three, what is, let's see, this would be a need for one in favor. Microphone number three, are you in favor? I'm in favor of tabling indefinitely the resolution. You're in order. What, uh, what is your name? Your uh, name? I am Walt Unterberger, Thank you. Se senior pastor of Colemanville. What uh, what I've been hearing is that the resolution essentially is aspirational. And what I've also been hearing through this entire annual conference uh, are the benefits and the importance of our being together and our working together and our being united in working for the mission of God's kingdom together. But yet, on this important issue, we are far from together or united. And so at this, and we do have a process. It's not as though we're devoid of a process. We do have a process. We are part of a denomination that has a way of doing things. Okay. So it would seem to me that if we were to pass this resolution, uh, I would agree very much that it indeed is aspirational, but what we would actually be aspiring to is to hurt each other and disunify ourselves, which to me is tantamount to shooting ourselves in the foot. Okay. Thank you. Um, that was a speech in favor. Microphone number one, are you a favor or I need somebody who is opposed. Is that you, microphone number one? Opposed uh, to no, I, I would call a question. Okay, that is in order. Um, it's not debatable, it needs a second. Okay, and these two-thirds, if you will uh, go to vote on this, I need two-thirds. Lift the hand and say aye to call the question. Aye. If not, same sign. Abstentions, and you're more than two-thirds, and so now we're voting on the motion to postpone indefinitely this particular resolution. If you will favor that, lift the hand and say aye. If you oppose that, lift the hand and say aye. No. Too close again, folks. We're going to have to do the same process, so get our tellers ready. <coughs> tellers, are you ready? Okay. Yeah, it was really close. Very close. All right, so if you will support the postponement indefinitely, please stand. If you want to postpone indefinitely, please stand. And do not sit down until a teller says it's time to sit down. <laughs> Thank you.
Okay, if you would like to not table indefinitely, if you're against that, stand up please and stay standing until someone doth tell you otherwise. Yeah, because we don't have enough keypad. All right, we're still waiting. Now abstentions, if you would like to abstain from voting, and please stand up. And if, if you're walking around, you know, don't look like you're voting, okay? We've got a lot of people moving. We're only counting abstentions now. Abstention people only. Please stand.
Okay, please stand, hold steady for the vote tally from our secretary. On the motion to table indefinitely, 246 in favor of tabling, 251 against tabling, three abstentions. So we have a few folks. Motion to postpone has been defeated. A microphone number two. Hi. I'd like to um, ask the question, please. Yes. I, I'm sorry. I mean, I'd like to call the question. Okay. Call the question on the main motion, the main motion for think, all that goes before. Yeah, I think we've debated it enough. Okay. That would, that's in order. It needs a second. Jason just seconded it. Okay. Um, that would mean you'd have to vote two-thirds to go straight to vote. Okay. And that would be on this resolution 13. Okay. If you would be ready to vote, lift the hand and say aye. If not, same sign. Abstentions. Okay, we are going to go straight to 13. Do you want to say something? Um, yes. Okay, this is your big chance. <laughs> We've been fighting with you all day, and you got 15 seconds, okay? 15 seconds. Da, 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 da. How much longer are you with us? Next year. Oh, I'm sorry. I got the car running. How much longer am I with us, I guess, is the question. That's a better question. Okay. <laughs> Our intention in presenting this resolution is to, to call us to a time of discernment, to call us to a time to voluntarily commit to not be more divisive to continue to search for answers, to continue to hear each other and to find ways to love each other. Our call is not to disobey the discipline, but to allow us to make the changes that this church demands. We are broken. We are in disagreement. We are hurting. We are afraid. Let us strive together to be in unity and continue, continue to be an annual conference that does no harm, that does good, and stays in love with God. Let us agree to do that. I invite you to vote in favor of this as we strive, as we aspire to be the church that we know that we are. Thank you. If you will support Resolution 13, lift the hand and say aye. aye. If you're opposed, lift the hand and say aye. aye. If you abstain, lift the hand and say aye. And we're going to have to tally. I'm really sorry, but this is too important. And we can't use those voting pads because some of you were issued pads because you had a right to vote for delegates, but you weren't. But you can vote for things here. So we couldn't issue a bunch of new pads for the people that could vote for this but couldn't vote for that. You understand? It isn't like we we really wanted to do this slower, but this is too important. So we're going to take the time to do this standing vote one for final time. And we're going to ask for those people who support 13, please stand now. <coughs> and as you know, this is very close, so please be patient. And don't walk around a bunch so they can count quickly.
far my head in three that you wouldn't go for it. You gotta try, you know? All right, so if you will be opposed to number 13, please stand. Opposed. Okay, if you're an abstention, abstentions only, please stand.
been up here so long, my both of my batteries are dying. Like, is, that, is that a surface? Yeah. Yeah. It's my second one. Mine's the same way. It's getting there. Yeah, man. Be up here too long. You're right. <laughs> Any notes or anything, or no, no, I'm good. I'll read off of yours. Fair enough. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. I think we give you the extensions. Did he give you the extensions? Yeah. This thing keeps squeaking. <laughs> I'm of course that guy. I find a button and I'm like, click, 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 click. Sorry, okay, friends, uh, we're really close to the wire, but we're going to uh, call us back to order for the reading of the vote for number 13, and then I'm going to call for a moment of prayer. Two hundred and seventy-three in favor, 208 against, 15 abstentions. Let us pray. Gracious God, this was a very difficult moment at the end of a very good conference, and we are hearts of love, all of us, and yet we are deeply divided. 66 votes. Kind of reminds me of general conference, 54 votes. Oh, Lord, for the days that are ahead, may you find us, give us the grace to move together the best we know how, loving the Jesus that we all love and serving the gospel's mission in unity. We pray this in your name. Amen.